ever wonder what would actually happen if an alien civilization made contact? If they haven't already? Would the public be made aware? Or would it be kept secret? How would we decode what they're saying? And how on earth will we reply? Well, believe it or not, there is an entire field of science that is dedicated to this. By sending intentional messages, we'll let the civilizations know that we want to make contact. There actually is a protocol that tells us what to do in case we pick up a signal that looks promising. It's time to explore the unexplored. Seth Shostak is a senior astronomer at SETI, the rather cunningly named Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute. For decades, the institute has been leading the way in actively searching for extraterrestrial signals in the hopes of making the first contact with ET. Most people, when they think of looking for intelligent life, they have some scenario kind of like in Star Trek, right? You get to a fancy rocket and you just, you know, rocket off to some other world and look for it. We simply can't do that. But what you can do is maybe find the aliens at home by eavesdropping on their radio waves, or maybe they have flashing lasers. If alien civilizations are anything like us, then they'll emit plenty of signals all the time. Radio, television, microwaves. All we need to do is just eavesdrop on one of these signals. And then boom, we've got contact. To make this possible, SETI uses 42 radio telescopes called the Allen Telescope Array. They direct these telescopes towards clusters of stars that we know have exoplanets in the hopes that one of those exoplanets is broadcasting signals. Now, we're looking for signals that are what are called electromagnetic signals, which is to say, you know, flashing lights or radio waves. I mean, radio is just another form of light, if you will. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And why do we do that? Well, we know that it would work. We know that signals like, that, like those could go, you know, from one star system to another and not become so weak that you could never detect them. I mean, it's always possible that they've developed some new physics that allows them to communicate in a way quite different from what we're envisioning. But, you know, you can't do an experiment based on science you don't yet know. So we go with what we do know. They haven't found anything definitive yet, but what happens when we do? A lot of people do think that there's some sort of official procedure if you find a, a signal. I mean, wouldn't the Pentagon get involved and so forth? Well, <laughs> they've never shown much interest in getting involved in it. And asking for a procedure is like asking Chris Columbus, hey, Chris, look, you know, you're going to get in these three ships and head, head west on the Atlantic. What if you discover a new continent? Have you got a protocol for that? Well, he didn't, and it wouldn't have helped anyhow. Are you as surprised as me to hear that there is no official protocol for when we receive alien signals? Now, people who are involved with SETI tend to think ahead. There actually is a protocol that tells us what to do in case we pick up a signal that looks promising. It's, it's very trivial. It just says, check out this signal, tell everybody, and, and don't start broadcasting back until you have uh, the you know, the consent, if you will, of the rest of the world's population. So you don't have one society trying to monopolize communication with the aliens. What would happen after that is you would get everybody in the world who can study this thing because they got a big antenna or whatever. Then they would build new equipment that might be able to get the message. In other words, the bits that presumably are attached to that transmission. And once you have those, now you have, you know, the equivalent of the hieroglyphics, and now you try and figure out what they might mean. Bear in mind, these might not be intentional messages. We could be picking up their equivalent radio and TV transmissions that have just stumbled into our radio telescope. But for now, let's assume that they are sending a direct message. What happens next? What if we decide to talk back? You know, how will we encode that? Will we send them stuff in colloquial American English? Some a language they always seem to understand in the movies, or, or what else? You know, it, probably it's better just to send lots and lots of information. I would just send them the internet myself. Really? It's mostly video games, TikTok dances, and ASMR. Replying to any signal that we might pick up is, actually, it's very controversial. You wouldn't think so, but it is. You know, what are you going to say? And there's some people say you shouldn't reply at all. So, you know, the matter of replying is, is controversial because of this potential for some sort of danger. On the other hand, I'm sure 
that if we were to pick up a signal next week or next month or next year, there are going to be plenty of people who have the ability to construct a transmitter in a backyard dish who are going to be sending their own messages to the aliens. That's more terrifying than sending the entire internet. But what's odd is if aliens exist and there isn't some mass government conspiracy, then why haven't we heard anything? Well, as SETI continues their search for extraterrestrial intelligence, there's another organisation that thinks that we shouldn't be waiting to hear from them, we should be actively sending signals to potential alien habitats. What would you call an organisation that messages extraterrestrial intelligence? My name's Doug Vakic, I'm president of METI International. For over 60 years, SETI scientists have been searching for signals from other civilizations. So far, we haven't found anything. But what happens if every civilization is doing exactly the same as us? It would be a very quiet universe. That's why we should be sending messages of our own to try to elicit first contact. I'm at a scientific facility far north of the Arctic Circle called ICECAT, an organization that sends radar signals into the sky to understand the composition of our upper atmosphere. But the interesting part, the new angle, is that we can also use it to send signals to nearby stars. One of our prime targets is the nearest star to Earth, Proxima Centauri, which is orbited by a planet in the habitable zone. We're sending signals that communicate some core ideas of science, like chemistry, the periodic table of elements, something that we and the aliens have in common. By sending intentional messages, we'll let the civilizations know that we want to make contact. And in some cases, that may just be what's required to get a response. Whether you think we should just wait and listen or actively send messages out into the expanse of space, the search is well and truly on. We haven't yet found evidence of life outside the Earth, let alone intelligent life. But scientists do believe that there is life out there. And remember, these signals can take a really long time to transmit. In the best case scenario, we could send a message and get a reply in just eight years. That's how long it would take to communicate with the nearest star to Earth. More realistically, it could take centuries, even millennia to communicate. So this is an inherently multi-generational project. So there may well be another planet a thousand light years away whose messages are hurtling towards us. And it could be any day now that we finally hear from them. Or maybe they're just watching, listening biding their time. Or if they're anything like us at all, they've been meaning to message us back. And they will. Just after one more scroll.